Interpreting the data that students have collected and represented is another aspect of information solutions. Now, this is developed in conjunction with the statistics unit in mathematics, which also heavily involves interpretation. But it can also be integrated in with lots of other learning areas, such as HASS, um, geography and history, uh, English, PE, and of course, science and mathematics. So once data is um, collected and represented, we need to make meaning from that data. We turn it into information. Now, often we use digital tools to assist in making that meaning. Graphs, spreadsheets are the most common. In older years, we also use databases and more complex ways of interpreting um, the data that has been collected. But there are various things that the students need to be able to explore. So first is different ways of presenting and visualizing information. Now, the most common of these is different forms of graphs, but there's also infographics, um, simulations, dynamic interactives, um, and a range of different ways that we can make the interpretation of information easier by how we present the information in various visualizations and diagrams and images, pictures, stories can um, be a way of presenting and interpreting data as well. So there's lots of different ways of engaging with the data that is being collected. Now, students also need to be able to make arguments based upon this information. So when does the data support our argument and when doesn't it support it? Do the, does the statistical data say that, yes, um, the amount of rubbish being found in the, in the playground is increasing? Or does it say that it's staying the same? Or it might say it's decreasing. Um, so we need to be able to interpret the data that we've collected and represented to be able to make meaning from that. And as part of that, we need to understand that sometimes people deliberately misinterpret data or present data falsely in order to present a particular argument. And so being able to understand the data and how it is being misinterpreted or mis misrepresented is important. Now, one of the most common of these is by breaking the scale. So if we have a, a, um, a graph showing the, let's say the temperature rise on the earth over the last thousand years. And if we show that temperature from zero to 100 and every year that it is changed, um, we can see relatively accurately what is being presented. If, however, we break the, the scale and we say it's not from zero to 100, but it's from 95 to 100, and we show the change over that period of time, that may be a completely different interpretation. Generally, the slope will be much um, larger or less. So we'll interpret that data differently than if we saw it across the full range. So that's just one way of misinterpreting data, but there's many others. So exploring that and how we can display information differently is an important way of engaging with data interpretation. Now, the other aspect is around what are called ordinal and nominal categorical, discrete and continuous numerical va variables. So lots of statistical terminology there, and we teach it generally in, in relation to statistics in mathematics so that students can understand. But we're looking at the different distributions of data, um, the range of the data that's being displayed, the shape of the data, how that can be important, and it very much integrates in with graphing and statistical analysis, generally done in years five and six, but mostly focused on the mathematics involved rather than the digital technologies. But where the digital technologies can be useful is as an ICT to help enhance that analysis, making those mathematical calculations quicker and easier, 
being able to turn them into graphs much more quickly and easily than if we had to do them by hand. And that supports a greater um, interpretation of the data. Another aspect that is explored um, in later years is being able to access live data and particularly data off the internet in terms of large data sets where we can then start making interpretations <coughs> on what's called real-time data. So looking at um, surf conditions in real time and looking at wave heights and the force of the, um, the waves and a whole lot of other things that can help us understand whether or not it would be a good time to go to the beach or not. Um, so this allows us again to get back to that main focus of technologies solving problems. How can we utilize the interpretation of data into solving problems? And often that involves students creating digital solutions that assist in that interpretation of data, being able to present it in different ways, in easier ways, doing digital da dashboards and things that we can manipulate and change and see the effects of those. These all help us in interpreting data more effectively and efficiently. But another is looking at these large data sets and being able to graph them and search them. So for example, there's a couple of activities where you can look at the distribution of um, first names and look at when certain names were particularly popular. And from that, it's able to um, make an interpretation of what year someone with a particular name is likely to be born within. So an example given here, the name Aiden wasn't particularly popular at all before 2000. Um, it was most popular around 2010 and has dropped off since. So someone with the first name Aiden is most likely born within that age range and much less likely to be born at other um, times. So from that simple process of being able to um, identify the age range of um, first names, you could make a good interpretation of when someone is born simply from their first name. And that has a range of implications. Now another activity is looking at the um, where certain people have been likely to be, have been born. And I've given you a database of uh, first names in Queensland and where certain names are popular in different regions. So the fact that you may have a particular name um, means it's more likely that you were born in a particular location than other locations. So from those two databases now, from someone's first name alone, we can make a reasonable um, guess as to where they were born and when they were born. And that again has a range of different implications. And that's just one set of information that we can uh, interpret through the use of digital technologies.